Today for New Music Monday, we're going to talk about the long-awaited new album from Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, and it's called Push the Sky Away. It's hard to believe that it's been five years since the last formal Bad Seeds record because Grinderman did such a great job of filling that void. You can see the last Bad Seeds record, Dig Lazarus Dig, as a very clear indication as to what Grinderman was going to be. But if you're looking for a Bad Seeds record that sounds like those Grinderman records or the last Bad Seeds record, this is not the album for you. This is far more akin to the classic, dark, slow drama of the Bad Seeds. If you enjoyed that fantastic album of theirs, The Boatman's Call, then this is going to be far more up your alley than anything Nick Cave has been doing as of late. Every single song here is really heavy when it comes to mood, but that's nothing new to The Bad Seeds. But on this record, it's a bit more quiet, and there's this stillness throughout the entire album that works in a very good way. There's also an amazing range in terms of instrumentation and orchestration all across the album, and the piano on songs like Water's Edge is nothing short of gorgeous. Along with this, the band really steps into a new direction, bringing in a lot of samples and loops in other parts of the music. And it shows, if nothing less, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds are always innovating their sound. Another change is that Nick's vocals are a lot more direct and more clear than on almost any album he's recorded previously. And while overall it definitely sounds like a Bad Seeds record, it's just a bit more sparse in general. That being said though, this album is a big miss for me, and it's something I never thought I'd say about a Bad Seeds album. Lyrically, Nick Cave is nowhere near the top of his game. And to be honest, there's a couple songs on this album where he phones in the lyrics so bad it's almost embarrassing. And it's really disappointing because Nick Cave is without question one of the greatest lyricists of all time. And you can actually see a gradual descent in his overall writing from his last three or four albums, which is a huge frustration. There's another thing on this album that's an absolute rarity for the Bad Seeds. There are musical miscues, with the most notable being the rhythmic backing of the song Wide Lovely Eyes that is so offbeat it's distracting. But even with these oddities aside, the fact of the matter is, Push the Sky Away just isn't engaging at all. The songs just sort of float by one after another, and even when you're trying to get into them, they still fail to hook you. And due to the sparse nature that I talked about before, a number of these songs end up sounding like they're just incomplete. To be honest, I listened to this record well over a dozen times, hoping that I'd get what they were trying to do with these songs. Or maybe that I'd have some sort of sudden artistic breakthrough, because this is an album I really wanted to love. Because Nick Cave, whether he's with The Bad Seeds, The Birthday Party, or Grinder Man, is one of my all-time favorite performers. But the fact is this, Push the Sky Away falls very far from the expectations that most longtime Bad Seeds fans most likely have. As while it does have a number of beautiful musical moments, for me, they're heavily outweighed by the overall lack in lyrical consistency and outright impact. And as much as it pains and frustrates me to say it, the truth is still the truth. And on the Bite or Borrow It, the new album from Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds is a borrow it, and only a borrow it because I really believe everybody should listen to everything Nick Cave puts out at least once. So that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you dug it. If you did, go ahead and click subscribe, leave a comment, click like, whatever you want to do. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr right here, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Oh!